Hi, uh, my name is Paul Mazurek. I am the museum curator of the city of Wyala and also the tourism assets development officer. Um, today I will be talking about the Wyala architecture, uh, which is a, a very specific um, subject uh, for the city of Wyala and has been since um, the early 1940s. Uh, first, I would like to acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the land. Um, we acknowledge and respect the Bangala people as the traditional custodians of the ancestral lands. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of Bangala people to the country and the sea. While our architecture um, is a, a very specific subject for the city, um, the wireless European architecture journey um, starts with the humble industrial tents. The story began in January 1901. 20 men, 16 horses and several drays uh, landed at the beach under Hammock Hill to start work on the jetty and tramway to the Iron Oak Mine. A camp was made on the beach consisting of tents and horses corralled behind a wire between a circle of trays. Four years later, the families that follow the workers still lived in tents or hessian shelters with earth floors. The first simple stone house was constructed in 1905. The jetty opened to its full service in 1914. At the time when the first town survey outlined the future development beyond the Hammock Hill and Wyla itself, was proclaimed a town. The private and few public structures constructed in the next two decades uh, followed the common South Australian construction and design trends of the town. The big change started in 1938 and 1939 with the declaration of World War II, creating a boom in industrial expansion that went beyond the South Australian borders. The population of Wyala increased from 1,000 people in 1920 to 5,000 people in 1940. BHP Limited, that created and owned this private company town, joined forces with the South Australian government uh, in a rapid urban development. BHP Limited, as a New South Wales based company with already established worldwide connections, promoted modernism while the South Australian government remained conservative in its outreach. Wireless architectural development of the 1940s in particular is therefore a mixture of those approaches. The two major wireless building styles applied were streamlined modern and neoclassical revival, thus making the place quite unique and never repeated within the state of South Australia. So the architecture styles, uh, Streamline Modern. Um, the Streamline Modern was a late variation of the Art Deco style in the architecture. It emerged in the USA um, in the 1930s as an industrial design that stripped Art Deco of some of its ornament, while in Europe its equivalent combined the curved and cubic massing and geometric distinction of functionalistic style, architecture, also Bauhaus and D-style. This 20th century modern architecture was also based on new and innovative technologies of construction, such as use of glass, steel and reinforced concrete. The common approach within this form was that idea should follow function, Australian designs of the Streamline Modern uh, started to be adopted and produced mainly in the 1940s. Sydney was the best example. The Neoclassical Revival Architectural Style In the history of art terminology, the term of Neoclassical Architecture applies to the 19th century. At that time, the original revival of the Greek classical architecture developed into a number of streams that were labelled according to specific past eras they copied or slightly reinvented, such as Neo-Romanesque, Neo-Gothic, Neo-Renaissance, Neo-Baroque or Eclectic, 
Eclectic is a style that combines all or some of those together. The term Neoclassical Revival or Eclectic Era belongs to the early 20th century. This Neoclassical Revival style was sometimes open to the influences of Art Deco and streamlined modern designs. Art Deco The style developed in France before World War I as Art Decoratifs, a movement and spread around Europe and the USA in many forms such as Cubist, Arts and Crafts and Secession, all these applications to the architecture. It ceased its influence during the 1920s. There is a number of uh, quite distinctive buildings uh, within the Viola city from this period. Community Band Hall. Uh, architect, unfortunately unknown, but it was BHP uh, Limited commissioned. Builder, unknown either, BHP Limited commission. Construction date 1938 and the style represents neoclassical revival style with a streamlined modern influence. This is a reinforced concrete building on rectangle plan. Facade with deep entry bay, flat top openings of the main door and windows with additional geometric decorations imitating arches. Neo-Baroque decorations on the façade and pilasters along the sides. Hipped corrugated galvanized iron roof is supported on steel trusses. Multi-paned windows with small grilled openings along each side. The building was officially opened on 24th May 1938 by the BHP chairman Darling. A dual function building for use by both BHP pay office and a band hall contained heavy-duty safes for cash and valuables. Therefore, armed guards were stationed there during the official paydays and also it indicates the fortress appearance of the building as such. Fire station. Architect of this building is unknown, but uh, possibly its architect in chief department in Adelaide under the guidance of William Lindsay. The builder, unknown, construction date 1951, style streamline modern. This is irregular plan stretcher bond brick fire, fire truck garage and offices building with metal frame doors and windows and skillion roof behind brick parapet walls. The door surrounds are rendered um, and a brick plinth with string cores surrounds the doors, entry porch and all walls. The building in appearance is compatible to the neighboring court structure. Courthouse. Architect, um, architect in Chief's department in Adelaide under William Lindsay guidance. Builder Frederick Fricker Builders. Construction date 1943 and style streamline modern. Two-story brick masonry um, with stretcher brick bond building with distinctive string coursing and jointing and a coarse bluestone base. Irregular plan, facade with structured pavilion. The metal sheet roof is concealed behind a brick parapet. It contains original multiple paint windows and sunshades. The external walls, originally white, were painted to cover staining from the nearby BHP works. This is the first formal courthouse building constructed in Viola at all. Former Billiards Hall. Architect, possibly designed by Russell and Yeland. Builder, unknown. Construction date, 1940. Style, streamline modern. This is a single-story brick building on rectangle plan. The facade is dominated by rendered decorative parapet, flat roofed veranda and sectioned entry base with doors and dominant rectangular windows. It is completed with flat roof. 
From the early 1940s until late 1990s, the building continued to be occupied by a car company, Nihils Motors. Spencer Hotel, architect Norman Fisher and Russell and Yeland Architects. Builder, Frederick Fricker Builders. Construction date 1939, style Streamline Modern. A substantial two-story hotel building on irregular plan constructed of brick with cream tile facing at street level, rendered upper levels with projecting string courses. Elaborate bass relief panels in the upper frieze depict industrial operations in the town. Timber frame doors and windows at the upper level are original as well as decorative iron balustrading and signage. Opened in August 1939 with 26 bedrooms and a brick bar 80 feet long, which is over 24 meters, and the detailed relief panels with industrial motifs were made by company Wilmant and Ingham. The hotel was extended almost immediately in early 1940 when the decorative metal lettering and relief panels in the northern bay were moved to their present positions. Former National Bank Architect Woods, Baggett, Leban Smith and Irvin Builders Weber and Williams Construction date 1940 Style Neoclassical Revival style with reference to the Georgian colonial architecture. This is the original National Bank building, constructed of random dressed ashlar on rectangular plan. The facade contains six Roman Tuscan order pillars with decorative entablature. Rectangular multiple paint windows retain Baroque inspired head decorative element. The solid rectangular stone door frames fulfills both decorative and construction purpose. The structure has two gable roofs hidden by parapet in front. The interior design incorporated a manager's residence. The bank's design offered night banking facilities, which were not available anywhere in South Australia at the time except in Adelaide. The Adelaide City buildings by the Woods Baggett architects from the same or close period were mainly in Adelaide. Former Savings Bank Architect Harold Herbert Jory Builder Frederick Fricker Builders Construction date 1941 Style Eclecticism between Neoclassical Revival and Streamline Modern the savings bank building on rectangle plan constructed of sandstone walls. Two hip roofs are hidden behind the elevated facade. The original facade's pronounced decoration with four pillars and signage is now reduced to the entablature section with four stacular motifs only. The structure of pillars, windows and door are retained but minus the decorative elements. Later, metal frame windows have been installed in the upper level. The verandas were added in 1990, but didn't alter the original building. The overall concept follows the National Bank building design nearby, but with Jory's own interpretation of a neo-Romanesque decoration and inclination towards trending streamline modern of the period. The savings bank was opened only a year after the completion of the National Bank, confirming the growing business confidence in the city. Bayview Hotel Architect Barrett, Glover and Pointer Builder Frederick Fricker Builders Construction date 1941 Style Streamline Modern a two-story hotel building constructed of Halley's textured cement bricks um, on a square uh, plan faced at street level with cream and buff ceramic tiles. 
Brick parapets topped in concrete capping face both street frontages. The hipped roofs are behind um, an arc clad in corrugated metal sheet. The tower contained the concrete storage tank that supplied the hotel's water. The original metal lettering still intact on the facade. Glass brick infill panels provide light to the foyers, doors are set in lakewood silky oak and the furnishing was completely provided by John Martin and company. A fine example of streamlined modern style with distinctive maritime theme, including a mast. This is a reflection on the wireless shipbuilding and BHP being New South Wales based company, therefore importing this progressive modernist style into a regional South Australian city. The hotel opened in December 1941. The builder um, from 30th January 1942 article uh, describes the Bayview Hotel as a modern hotel for defense center, as it was known at the time. This hotel is similar in style to the Hotel Nickerbrocker in Bathurst, New South Wales, the Hotel Clare in Broadway in Sydney, uh, and Mitchell House, um, Elizabeth Street in Melbourne in Victoria. The Bayview Hotel was completed and trading well before the completion of the Adelaide's streamlined modern buildings of the town, um, which were the Bank of New South Wales at the corner of King William Street and North Terrace, um, architects Claridge, Hessel and McConnell, and Deep Acres Apartments um, at Melbourne Street in North Adelaide by architect McConnell. This Bayview Hotel um, is an iconic example of the streamlined modern architecture in um, Wyala and well beyond. Commercial building, architect unknown, builder unknown, construction date 1940s, style streamlined modern. This is a brick structure on a long and narrow rectangular plan. Facade reflecting the commercial and residential purpose of the building with dominantly horizontal features including large windows and flat roof. This is a fine example of a New South Wales style building that would easily fit into a city street in Sydney at the time, demonstrating the growing importance of Wyala. St. Teresa's Catholic School and Convent Architect Austin and Gregory McKay from Sydney, builder Gregory McKay, Sydney, construction date 1941, style conservative, streamlined, modern. The two story stretcher, brick bonds school building on the rectangular plan and stone foundation has a tiled gabled roof with Christian statue and symbols. The street facade is regularly faced by single and double pillars. The second floor uh, rear verandas are now filled in with timber paneling and windows to form more classrooms. The school was originally designed for 500 pupils, with the first teachers being Sisters of the Order of the Good Samaritan from New South Wales and Victoria. A two-story convent building behind on a rectangular plan is constructed of red brick in a stretcher bond system with tiled hipped roof and timber doors and windows. It has an elaborately detailed recessed brick entrance with cruciform parapet. The interior design contains seven bedrooms, bathroom with hot and cold water, a chapel, music room and dining hall. Former Catholic Presbytery, architect Austin and Gregory McKay, Sydney, builder Gregory McKay, Sydney, construction date 1941, style conservative, streamlined, modern. A two-story stretcher bond brick house on an irregular plan with tiled, hipped and gabled roof. The facade is finely detailed with bending and cruciform elements and a street-facing pavilion. Combination of round 
rectangular and square windows refer to the streamlined modern designs. The interior design contains three bedrooms and study, including separate housekeeper accommodation with laundry and kitchen. A house uh, at 5 Dick Street, Viola. Architect unknown, builder unknown, construction date 1940s. Style Art Deco. Rendered stone building on irregular plan with gable roof. Facade showcases two pavilions with pronounced rectangular windows with shades, simple geometrical lines and stone decorated base. This building is influenced by the British art and craft version of the Art Deco movement. Viola Technical High School Architect Architect in Chief Department Adelaide under the guidance of William Lindsay. Builder Frederick Fricker Builders. Construction date 1942 to 1943. Style Streamline Modern with Spanish Mission Style Cupola. This, is, this complex consists of two one story and one central two story building. Constructed on a U-shaped plan, um, the external walls are brick with internal walls built of white stone. Hipped tiled roof is decorated with central cupola. The facade is dominated by a central pavilion, pronounced pilasters, large multi-pane windows and a tall rectangular main entrance door. The building was specifically designed to face south for the provision of daylight. The water reticulation included combination of rainwater collection and storage and the city's main usage. The heating for winter months was provided by a central heating system with radiators installed in the rooms. The wider side includes large reserve for sport activities adjoining the seacoast. This modern school accommodated high school students during the day and special BHP apprentice classes and advanced technical studies and diploma courses during the evenings. The school was built as a joint project of the South Australian government and BHP Limited. Sir Malcolm Barclay Harvey, Governor of South Australia, laid the foundation stone on 17th February 1942. Mornington Apartments Architect Unknown Builder Frederick Fricker Builders Construction date 1943 to 1944 Style Streamline Modern A block of flats constructed on irregular and rectangular plan with load-bearing stretcher bond brick walls and flat roof. The facade is both practical and geometrically decorative including pavilion with two deep entry bays and generous size metal framed windows and balconies. The three-story residential building was constructed in 1943 to 1944, becoming the tallest building in Viola at that time. It was promoted by BHP Limited as one solution to Viola's housing problem in 1944. A second wing facing Walker Crescent was added in the 1950s. This is another example of Sydney New South Wales influence on architecture in Viala, South Australia at the time. Former Carabas Shops Architect Alfred Ernest Keel, Builder Unknown Construction date 1941 to 1943 Style Streamline Modern brick masonry building on rectangle plan with three separate hip roofs behind the frontal decorative parapet. The original facade contains central entry with large rectangular windows on both sides. The later renovations included considerable enlargement of the sectioned veranda along the full length of the front of the building. The building was originally designed for a food, fruit and vegetables commercial operation. 
RSL Building. Architect unknown. Builder Frederick Fricker Builders. Construction date 1947. Style streamlined modern with functionalistic features. Rendered brick building on rectangle plan with hipped roof behind parapets. Geometrically structured facade includes two prominent sides of the building. While flat verandas dominate the first story, the second story veranda fills the corner bay section with two dominant rectangular windows. One intentionally vertically divided rectangular window on the northern side complements this facade section of the building. The basement large glass windows and prominent entries conclude and emphasize the overall functionalistic effect. This RSL building is an example of one of the most progressive facades structures in the area. Richards Buildings Architect unknown, builder unknown, construction date 1940s, style streamline modern. Complex of three structures connected in one building, built on rectangular plan, the central section is covered by hipped roof while two adjoining sections have flat roofs. Decorative facade is completed with three rectangular windows and parapet, creating a second story. The base is dominated by regular sequence of large glass windows with bay door entries to the individual shops. This is an example of a city-style shopping premises transferred into a regional town. Avenue Buildings Architect unknown, builder unknown. Construction date 1940s, style streamlined modern. One-story brick building constructed on irregular L-shaped plan. The structure is divided into six shop units forming a unified facade. Flat roof is hidden behind decorative parapet that still retains the original lettering. The basement section is sequenced into a row of regular large glass windows with entry bays leading into the individual shops. This is another example of transformation of a city-style shopping experience into a regional town. Former Moyles Factory Architect unknown, however appointed by Moyles Company Builder unknown, but supervised by J.B. Conlon, engineer for the Moyles Company Construction date 1943 Style Streamline Modern L-shaped plan factory building with painted masonry walls steel multi-pane windows and screen doors A raised curved pediment faces the office entry from the street corner with another pronounced decorative elements on the side facing McBride Terrace. The building has a single span gabled roof clad in corrugated sheet metal. There are extensive service yards to the side and rear. The Port Piri based Moyles Ice and Drinks manufacturing company Equip the new plant with the latest Australian-made electrically driven and automatically controlled machinery. It was described in 1943 that by some respects it was a replica of the up-to-date Port Piri factory equipment. Former Salvation Army Citadel Architect unknown, builder unknown, construction date 1946. Style Neoclassical Revival style with streamlined modern influence. This is a rendered brick building on rectangular plan with gabled roof. Facade combines a geometrically shaped shallow pavilion with two buttress style columns. Large rectangular entry without any windows enforces the image of a fortress. Nicholson Avenue Primary. Um, architect, architect in chief's department, um, Adelaide, under William Lindsay. Builder unknown, construction date 
1954 till 1961. Style streamline modern. The infant school is a stretcher brick bonds building on a rectangle plan and the facade contains clean geometrical forms including a deep entry bay, timber and metal frames windows, hipped roof and a flagpole. The facade design may have been influenced by the design of the Bayview Hotel. The Nicholson Primary Complex of brick school buildings is a good example of the late streamlined modern design, especially the infant school. The primary school was opened in 1954 and the infant school in 1961. So, in, in summary, um, in, within these uh, distinctive structures um, in, in Wyala, uh, we have 17 buildings that represent the streamlined modern style. We have got four buildings representing neoclassical revival style. And we have one building on the list which represents Art Deco. And um, this um, uh, unique uh, commitment to the application of, uh, of this uh, architecture style in, in the urban development in Viola is, is very unique to the South, South Australia um, and especially the regional South Australia. This presentation is part of the South Australian um, uh, History Festival, um, May uh, 2022.